linking to Facebook. Sure. COO of DaVinci Group, ah? Huh? Yeah, and click it. COO and, okay. of DaVinci Group, yeah. And click it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Okay. If you refresh our page, you'll see the okay. link. I will. I will do that right now. Once ready, just let me know, yeah? Um, don't worry, you can just go ahead and have a yes. look. Okay. Hello, parents. Uh, thanks for being online again. Uh, this is Coach John uh, from Learning Out of the Box. And today, we have a very special guest, a very good friend of mine, and she's teacher Amu. And she's the COO of Tabichi Group, as well as Clay Kids. And she runs this very awesome Facebook group that you should go to and is Clay Kit Digital Learning Enthusiast. Welcome, Teacher Amu. Hi. Hello. Hi. Really excited to be here. Hello, everyone, for taking time off um, in your morning to be with us. It's a privilege. So, well, welcome to this uh, session, and tell tell us more about what what uh, what your work consists and how it has greatly impacted your family's life as well as because I know that you also uh, teach your child in, in, in whatever you have learned. Yes, uh, so, so thank you for that. Um, uh, so just to give you an overview and background of what I do, I mean, DaVinci Group and Click, it just sounds like, you know, company names and so on. So um, uh, I wanted to um, create something different in learning. Okay, so that was the intent behind um, creating a company called DaVinci Group and Click It. So my background is in clinical neuropsychology. So a lot of brain stuff. <laughs> I, I basically look at how um, uh, anything that happens in the brain manifests in behavior. And my partner's uh, background is in neurobiology. So he's hardcore biologist, uh, looks at cell level differences and so on and relates it to the brain. Um, right now, I'm also, I've also been accepted to do my PhD uh, with the University of Helsinki Faculty of Medicine in Brain and Mind. So we're very, very geeky, brainy people. And uh, we wanted to sort of really look at education because um, both Sarah, my co-founder and myself, we've been born and bred in Singapore, been through the education system. Mm -hmm. um, did all the way up to the university and so on. And we realized, you know, after you came out of university, you kind of maybe fall short in how you should be expressing yourself and being in life. Um, I mean, we've surely got lots of good grades and so on and so forth. But when we came out to the working world, we realized that there were some, let's say, deficiencies in the way that um, we presented ourselves or the way that we thought and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. And, and I think that... Um, there's just, there's just so much literature about how education hasn't changed in the last 200 years. You know, Ken Robinson has written so many things about this. And Sarah and I really looked at the root of how this might have come to be for us. And um, at that stage, we were also, you know, uh, planning on getting married, having children and so on and so forth. And we didn't want the same to happen for our child. Right. Mm -hmm. So that was the motivation behind starting um, Da Vinci Group and Click It and Da Vinci Group because uh, we wanted to change the way education is, how education is perceived. At that point, there was a lot of rote learning. There was a lot of segregation between the arts and sciences in Singapore and Asia and lots of other uh, Western countries as well. And we wanted to use it as an opportunity to uh, bring the arts and the science together, just like in the era, in the Renaissance era, where, where Leonardo da Vinci was and lots of other, other painters and, and engineers and so on. So we wanted the arts to be learned through the science and the science to be learned through the arts and therefore we called ourselves the da vinci group um so so that the philosophy was great and we used this field of study called neuroeducation all right neuroeducation is actually uh, a field of study under neuroscience and it was a very up and coming uh, field um uh during the time when we started the company that was about eight years ago in fact it had already been researched upon for about 25 years uh, prior to that and it the the literature and the background did not get to singapore or asia mm -hmm. during that time 
Mm -hmm. So basically what neuroeducation says is that when you um, use sensorial means to engage with content, learn content, your brain wires very differently. And, um, and because of the way that the brain is as an organ, which is a very sensorial organ, that's why we have our five senses and so on. The way that it learns best is when you have sensorial engagement. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what Da Vinci Group then set out as a mission to do was to create um, opportunities to learn through highly sensorial means. And mm -hmm. that led us to us using clay, C-L-A-Y, pottery as a platform because clay has been found to be the highest, um, one, of the, one of the mediums that has the highest tactile cognition um, mm -hmm. factor, which means hand to brain activation, hand to touch, uh, touch to brain activation. Mm. And so that was our flagship medium that we used to create our programs to learn different topics, themes, content, you know, across different domains, different subjects and so on. And as a result of that, when we went out and did our classes um, to the various preschools and primary schools that we've worked with, which is about maybe 300 um, to date in the last eight years and 120,000 children, we realized mm -hmm. that parents were very, very curious about what's happening in their classroom. And mm -hmm. so we created a, a B2C sort of product called the Clay Kit. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Clay Kit was an opportunity for parents to actually sort of experience these lessons um, at home and get involved as well. So that's, you know, um, meaningful engagement opportunity, bonding opportunity, and also for the parents to plug into the learning process of their children. Mm -hmm. So that's Mm, go ahead. When, when you say clay, uh, do you have some samples to show? Because I think uh, it will be very important for parents to, ah, to actually be able to see it so they can relate to what you are doing. And uh, right. while, while, while teacher Amu is preparing that, uh, and I know that um, you have a son, a very handsome boy called <laughs> Jordan. <laughs> yes, I know. Very beautiful eyes. Yeah. It's quite a yeah. charmer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so and I and I and I know that and your child just got into primary one and, yes. and probably you can share also from my experience as an educator as a and also a parent. Um, sure. Um, what what do you think? Because you you mentioned that um, it seems like what he's saying in school, uh, there's something that is lacking, and probably this clay kit or the sensorial learning can 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 uh, top Plug up in what, the gap. Yes, can can fill the gap. Yeah. Okay, so just your first part of the question about the clay. So we yes. have our clay like this, packaged in uh, this way. Uh, this is about um, a, a good sizable 200 grams. And this is actually considered a lot. Um, I, for my purposes, when I do classes online or yeah. you know, probably, whatever sorry. else, so probably, you want me to uh, open it? No, no, and probably you can shift it uh, uh, like on the right side of, your, right side of, of you because it's, it's in the way. And I can't see Oh, your in face. the way of my face. Okay, got it, got it, got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. Thank you for the aesthetics. Yes. Okay, so, so this ah, is what, this good. This good. This this good. Is what um, I have prepared. Uh, the clay to be in just balls, but this mm -hmm. is how it comes in the clay kit. Mm -hmm. You see? So yeah. this is high-grade air dry clay flown in from the UK. Mm -hmm. And it has uh, a lot of uh, wood fibers that gives it its sturdiness. So even if um, you've made something and you've kept it for two or three years and so on, it's not going to disintegrate like some other clays that you might find in the bookstore and so on and so forth. So um, the utility value, that means the functional value of the clay is quite high. So if you made something that you created out of a, a certain topic, a theme or a problem sum or something of that sort, you can actually use it. And the whole mm -hmm. idea behind neuroeducation is to make sure that you create something that you would use it and apply so that you are, again, sort of uh, revisiting the, the experience and the neural connections that you made while doing it for the first time. So. Mm. Coming to Dronen, yes. Um, so Dronen has been our guinea pig from 17 months. So mm. when we first started the company, everything we, we wanted to do, because we knew theoretically the science makes sense, right? Given our backgrounds, we've really sort of looked at all the literature that's out there about neuroeducation, about clay, about what the medium has that other mediums probably don't have at that point, And therefore, uh, how do you do this? And then using that, we managed to find some other mediums like, you know, process drama, music, and so on and so forth. But clay was the flagship one. So we tried clay. we drawn in from 17 months. And um, the results were astounding. I've got to tell you the first time when I actually did it, 
uh, with Dronen. Um, I was actually uh, uh, playing with some clay, I think, with him. I wanted to introduce him to the medium. 17 months was just about the time uh, in mm-hmm. a child's developmental milestone where they see something, but they don't exactly take it and put it in their mouth. 17, 18 months. Mm-hmm. They would move their mouth because the material is squishy, but mm-hmm. there is an there's an inhibition response where you don't take it and put it in the mouth. Of course, this is different for many other children. They might be on varying stages, but as an average, 17 to 18 months is when that happened. So what happened was I gave him some clay and he was poking and so on and so forth. And then after that, I rolled it into a ball and mm-hmm. then um, I put it down on a, a, a board and then I smooshed it. Smooshing is pressing it at an angle not right, not directly on top, but at an angle to create depth perception. Mm-hmm. So I taught him how to do that. I, I showed it to him a few times and he got it. Mm-hmm. Now, this is the miracle, okay? So I think maybe a week later or something of that sort, I was fixing some ceramic mugs, okay? I was um, making some mugs and so on. And mm-hmm. I saw him take his finger and then press the floor like this, mm-hmm. okay? Exactly the action that I kind of showed him with the clay. And then I was like, okay, that's interesting. What happens if I give him some clay? So I made a ball and I gave it to him and he smooshed it. Of course, not directly like how I thought him at an angle, but he smooshed it on the top. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the thing that was great was that that 17 year, uh, 17 month old child was able to remember that action, of course, because babies do imitation and so on and so forth. But it just showed that the medium was something that was very sticky for him. Sticky in the sense that it's stuck to him that he can use it, um, mm-hmm. that this happened. So after that, so we took a few videos, I saw him a few more things. And every single time he was able to repeat it with shaping the behavior, it became better and better. So all the time um, since then, we started doing our programs with him, like, you know, we'll teach him content and then there will be a clay activity for him to sort of crystallize aspects of the content. Let's say we're doing underwater sea creatures. Then we will talk to him about all the different sea creatures, the, you know, giant spider crab, blockfish, so on and so forth. And then we will maybe create a fish pinch pot. Okay. Mm. And then he would do that sensorial um, experience of creating the fish pinch pot. And that way of actually learning showed us that maybe one or two weeks later, he can come back to us randomly and said, you know about that blockfish or mm-hmm. you know about that leafy sea dragon? It completely captivated the brain in such a way that it was able to fire and associate with the content. And then we knew anecdotally, at least at that point, that there was something there. Okay, mm. so with Drone and Wright, <clears throat> now the way that he thinks because of all that training since um, 18 months mm-hmm. is um, he's able to have a lot more abstract thinking, problem solving and creativity skills. And mm-hmm. I know these are very big words, but how this translates down is that he's much faster in connecting the dots. So when mm. I say something, he naturally tries to paraphrase something that I say. And mm. this is very, wow. very important for children because learning only happens at a superficial level when you're reading, sitting there without engaging. But mm. if you actively take on the role of trying to paraphrase something and tell me what it is that I'm saying, you are internalizing it. So that's one thing I've noticed. Dronen has also been able to work across different mediums, like what he makes in clay, he can sort of express in drawings or even like, you know, in music, he would say, because he learns the piano right now. And I think um, it has really stuck onto him as well, quite well. So sometimes, you know, he'll say, this is the musical piece for maybe um, uh, sea creatures in the water, you know? So like how the beats and the rhythm and the tones would be, whether it's soft, whether it's loud, you know, that sort of thing. So this ability to sort of go across different mediums, that's abstract thinking. And it really, really serves um, children to, to think that way because later on they can apply themselves better in life. Mm. All right. Um, awesome. And now and now with pr- primary school and so on, you can't run away from the English math science. So, so John, uh, this collaboration with John with the, with the book, the jungle book, I have it right here. So what I tried uh-huh. doing... What I tried doing uh, with Dronen was to look at a few problem sums over here and sort of crystallize it for him um, in, in clay works, right? So that we can do some clay activities and so on, so that there's a sensorial element to it. Because mathematical con- uh, concepts, um, if you look at evolution and so on and so forth, uh, we inherently have this subdigitization. But to mm. get it honed in and so on and so forth, uh, it might be a little bit complicated because maths, the figures, the numbers itself is one level. 
mm -hmm. if you translate that into a problem solve some you are adding like a language level so your brain has to kind of comprehend comprehend two things the mm -hmm. way it makes it easier for children to encode is when <coughs> excuse me when you concretize the whole thing with tangible objects okay so <clears throat> what we did was um, there were some sums about bananas and addition, subtraction. And so we created like a banana necklace. Mm -hmm. All right. These were the wow, number wonderful. of, these are number of bananas that were there in the problem. Again, sorry, this way. Yes. <laughs> this way. Okay. This way. Mm. Uh, okay. So, so then uh, we created the banana so that he understood the problem sums a little bit better. And then after that, uh, we made a painting fun art activity out of it. Okay. And then another sum that we did uh, was um, based on flowers. Hold on a mm -hmm. sec. So we kind of created these um, uh, paperweights. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one has more flower than the other, and each petal kind of represents a flower. So I think mm -hmm. if I remember correctly, the sum had 25 flowers for one person and 33 flowers for another person. And you're Wonderful. supposed to find out um, how it, uh, who has more and how much more. So we created this and he painted it. And of course, so, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so so in a sense, uh, it's like, uh, I think you also want him to be creative and instead of doing 25 flowers, which yeah. is quite a chore, uh, but I think there's this creative side of you uh, and in your work with him is you create a big flower with yes. 25 petals and, and one petal stands for one flower. Yes. Uh, and for guys who are watching now, uh, I think because when you do primary school math, uh, in fact, this is something called representation. And in fact, in primary one math, your child has started to learn uh, to use visual objects, which is one unit to represent one flower. So what Jack Amu is doing here is also bring the whole learning up to another level and using one yeah. petal to, to represent one represent. flower. Yeah. And, and I think uh, it would be a very good chance for me to show the parents um, because I found a video of Jordan, uh, which he did recently. And can I share now? So parents will get a better idea on what what uh, he's doing. And and I think for parents, um, Jordan has, Jordan, okay, Jordan is a seven-year-old boy. Six, turning seven in October. Okay, so six years old boy. And he has his own personal YouTube channel called Jonan's Playroom. And if you want to support this little boy, you can just Google Jonan's Playroom. And later I will show you what is it. Uh, and also, uh, later you, after the video, you can share with us how he was uh, selected by the school, or rather he was invited by the school to share uh, more on his experience of, of uh, becoming a YouTube star. I thought okay. that's, a, that's a great story. Okay, let me okay, just try. Sure. Okay, let me just try to share screen. Um, okay, okay, give me a minute. Yeah, again, all this tech. Okay, share computer screen. Okay, I will play and let me know if you can hear. Yeah. 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 Okay, this is Jordan. My name is Jordan, and welcome yes, can to hear. So today we are going to make something. And it's our own creation, all right? So you can make it like any sort of thing. So we are going to make a creative bee, all right? Is it full screen now? So yes, now it is. So oh, I'm going to tell you what I all have. I got a little bit of water to my in my side. And I got a rolling pin. And this is the detailed ones. And I got another rolling pin. There's not. And it's okay to... If you don't have this tool, because you can use a satin stick, a satin stick or a chopstick, all right? So let's get to it. Let me so just fast forward a bit. Take out a pin. To show you what he has done. You can see that Jordan is uh, using his hands. And I think this is the best part for mommy to share with us actually what he's doing. This. And how it helps him in learn, learning. Yes, so so obviously using um, hands uh, to sort of create helps you with your psychomotor skills, your gross motor skills, your fine motor skills, and it kind of um, helps with um, also sort of uh, understanding masses and weight and how you need to pinch and so on and so forth. So 
clearly he's completely engaging himself 100%. For the brain, it's like fireworks because mm -hmm. the texture of the clay changes every single time. Like it's soft, squishy, and then becomes dry and then malleable. Okay, like, know, uh, like a so a lot of things are going on. You can use it like... Yeah, like I see that uh, he's having fun at the same time. Don't do it until you are finished with it. And it's your own creation. And remember? for parents who are watching this, uh, don't do it. If you, you want to do it like an extra week, go ahead. Has if you eyes. want to do it like another one, <laughs> just go ahead. Yeah, I think many parents, uh, if they are with us right now, they will raise up both hands. Yeah. Yeah, so next time, we'll yeah. actually have any girls. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then the and then mom and dad will have a hard, hard, hard time trying to filter out. Yeah, we're gonna it's have a right heartbreak <laughs> when he grows up. I'll have heartbreaks coming at me. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Great, great. Yeah. Um. I also like add in like um. This is a very good opportunity for the child to learn many things. Uh, because when we when our children are in school, and this is from um from my perspective as a parent, um, when the kids are in school, they are being taught how to uh, learn masses only in the masses topic and learn about um, probably uh, size or shape in another topic. So, so probably in my opinion, it's like the learning, the learning is, is quite the learning is quite flat. Yeah. yeah. So when it comes to a six-year-old boy, um, in fact, he is learning many topics in one. Mm. Yeah, and also engaging his sensory. And all human beings have five senses. Yeah. So. And at the same time, I can see that he's having fun at the same time. So parents, uh, if your child is a more kinesthetic learner, you may want to engage him in all these uh, touch and feel act activity to get him to be more interested in learning, not necessarily just in math. Okay. Okay. So in the meantime, I also want to support Jonan. Um, let me just exit. Can you see this? Teacher Amu, can you see this page? Uh, yes, I can see it minimized. Yes, I can see the page. It says Jonan's so Playroom. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to share with parents. Uh, if you're online with us right now, um, please subscribe to Jonan's Playroom. Yeah, uh, this is not a paid advertisement. Jonan didn't pay me anything. Probably <laughs> <laughs> you can make something for me because you call me Uncle John, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, go I'll let Yeah, go ahead and subscribe to his channel because I think um, it's something very inspiring, even for adults like me. Like, wow, this six-year-old boy has a channel like this. And mommy, yes. you can share with us more on the parts when the school actually invited him to share more. Yeah, how 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 was it like for him? So um, it this actually just started as a pet project for us during the mm. circuit breaker. <laughs> we just wanted to sort of um, because Jordan's been around clay and creating all his life pretty much right at different mm -hmm. stages and so on and so forth and we thought hey it'll be quite cool since you know the whole nation is kind of going online and you know we also have to get him engaged he can't go out to play and so on let's maybe do videos because mommy is doing that a lot at home as well so that got him excited and so we just started shooting like a filming videos like you know first one you know just to give an introduction and then mm -hmm. we said let's kind of keep it like clay based since you love clay and then I shared uh, some of these initial videos with the teachers in the school because at that time there was no human connection and stuff like that so mm -hmm. and Dronan was kind of like missing uh, his school community his friends and so on quite a bit mm -hmm. um, so I just you know gave them the link after we had like maybe five or six videos and then the teachers were just so supportive mm -hmm. and um, they've always really described Dronan to be a very bubbly boy um, and a very friendly boy. So that crystallized into the videos was really um, an, an opportunity for them to see him present. Um, and um, they really commended him on his articulation and so on and so forth. So now that school's starting and so on, I don't know whether there might be opportunities for him to MC or whatever not and, you know, wow. that sort of stuff. But I think that what my intent was in getting him to do this, or rather, you know, seeing if he wanted to do it, was to just see whether he wanted to push himself a little bit further. Because, you know, the output of doing that video is great. It looks like that. But before we get to that stage in terms of the type of language, how we speak, how we focus, what are the cues so that I can tell you if you forgot or you've got to say that you need to add water or you need to use this tool, you know, that sort of stuff. And for him to recover on camera, 
it's a great mm -hmm. skill, I think, in terms of um, just being a person who can sort of express himself well. So it's been a great learning opportunity and, and I really want to look at building this yeah. Yeah, for him. Yeah. I must say that um, because uh, I actually was there when when Jonan was doing the sharing with you uh, yes. in our first Zoom meeting. In fact, it was a Zoom webinar where uh, there, are about, there were about 20 parents and yeah. Jonan was pretty reserved then. Probably then it was his first time doing it. Yes. Yeah. And it was already, it was uh, in March then. Yeah, remember correctly? Yeah, I think it March. was March. March, March or yeah. Late Feb, I can't remember. But a few yeah. months. Yeah, so so I so and I want to give Jordan a lot of credit here and how I wish he was here. He's here to 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 hear me out. Because then he was quiet and he was reserved and probably very shy and um speaking quite uh, softly. Now you can be you can now you can see that he's doing his own personal video and yes, he can speak very well. And I think that mommy also uh plays a big part in this coaching him. Yeah, mm. so he's so lucky to have mommy as a as his personal trainer at home. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, I think I think what has helped is that uh, mm. it's just not freestyle talking, but the medium of clay that's there. And this is one thing about clay that you should realize. It really helps with emotional regulation. Like mm. it or not, the whole texture of clay, the squishiness and so on helps children emotionally regulate. And you can see this a lot in kids with special needs. They will mm -hmm. use different activities to regulate themselves, like, you know, playing with foam, you know, shaving foam or playing with water and stuff like that. And clay for them is a little more uh, uh, concrete and malleable to, you know, release frustration, anger or anything of that sort, even for any other child. So another way that I used clay while Jonah was growing up was when, you know, he was having those tantrums or that, that uh, emotional meltdowns or something of that sort. It was like a go-to relief for him to sort of use. And um, I think while doing the video, which is quite an anxious uh, experience for him, mm -hmm. by playing with clay, it kind of helps him regulate and collect his thoughts a little bit further so that he's able to as express and articulate it well. So I think there's that comfort thing with the clay as well, which, which has worked out for him. Mm. And, and I like the part that you mentioned about the comfort thing because yesterday we have a guest, uh, her name is Sophie and she's a... Uh, uh, she provides emotional counseling for her clients. Yeah, so we are talking about we are talking about um, managing anxiety in children and, and parents. And I remember you mentioned that you have this kit that helps parents to manage their own emotions as well. Yeah, do you have yes. it next to you right now? Probably can share with us how it works. And I have it right there. If you want me to go get it. Oh, uh, is it okay? Is it okay? Yes, I, thought it'd I be can. Nice. It'd be nice. Just give too. me a moment. Yes. Okay. Okay, parents, uh, for us still online with us right now, today we have a special guest. Uh, uh, her name is, is teacher Amu, and she specializes in helping children to learn kinesthetically. Yeah, so meaning that they need to feel, they need to squash, they need to squeeze. Yeah, and I think um, many of our parents who I've spoken to is they 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 share with me that oh my child is is not interested in math, doesn't like math. And I think one question that you can ask yourself if you're facing this at home is is your child a kinesthetic learner, which means that probably flipping books, writing is something that uh, is boring for them. Yeah, so you may want to tweak your at your activity at home to make it suitable for your kid rather than just doing what anybody else is doing. Yeah, do you have it right now? Yes. So um, we call it the Clicky De Stress Kit, mm -hmm. and this is the adult version of it. Okay. Mm. All right. Uh, and inside, you would have the equivalent of what you might find in a regular clay kit. Um, but we have a number of QR codes on the top wow. that actually take you to different locations. So, I mean, this came out of, you know, the stresses that we're now facing, you know, because of COVID-19. And um, lots of people are actually dealing with it in a very fight or flight way, survival mm -hmm. mode and so on. And for the long run, with so many high, so much high cortisol levels, which is the stress hormone, your body is going to break down. And mm -hmm. for that reason, uh, we created this mental wellness um, kit for adults. All right, uh, like an adult version compared to the ch kids, the children's version, which looks like this. This is the mm. children's version, right? Mm. And this is what our regular programs are all based on. In, in this one, you get like the clay and a tool like this. And then the QR codes kind of give you the guide 
to do the techniques and so on. But the mental wellness one, you have the wellness guide, which is the techniques. And then you also have a video guide uh, to take you through how you can maybe do a pinch pot and get present to it, how you realize, um, you know, you get present to the sensorial touch of the clay and so on and so forth. And then we also sort of um, uh, found a good YouTube channel that has music that is in line with creating this atmosphere or environment for you to actually do this crafting and, uh, and, and so on and so forth. So that's what that's in there. And this uh, box also has like some paints, um, some paints and a brush for you to do your crafting activity. And uh, along with the tool um, that's here again, and mm -hmm. uh, refreshing towel, not a refreshing towel, like an antibacterial wet towel to clean up along mm -hmm. with the clay. So that's that. And we've also got a pouch version of it in case you don't want the box and you want wow. uh, reusability. And this pouch is really quite a good pouch and the same stuff is inside. Mm -hmm. um, and you can use it for um, putting your kids' toys, makeup, medicine, anything of that sort. So it's a good um, biodegradable canvas sort of cloth. And this way, we're really looking at Clay Kit being a product that can benefit everyone in the family. So something like a lifestyle product that the family can sort of do together at different intervals. So we've created many programs of uh, parent-child bonding activities together with the Clay Kit, this mental well-being or wellness one. And then, of course, our staple kids programs uh, that go and pair with the Clay Kit as well. Mm. All right. Okay. These are very nice uh, things that we can do with our kids. Uh, at the same time, uh, while working with many parents, uh, I can hear some of their objections, which is like, I do not have time for my kid. Yeah. At the same time, while they are probably also struggling to teach their kids who may be kinesthetic learner. Yeah. So what are some of the, your, your suggestions that parents can, can, can take up? Okay, so it doesn't have to be like a one hour thing that you do, especially when you're starting it out. Now, the more the biggest issue that parents are facing is focus and attention mm -hmm. from the children. Okay, mm -hmm. if the child is focused and um, attending to what they're doing, then you don't really need to sit there and spoon feed them, right? But the the, but the basic problem is they are not focused and they, they don't have the attention span to actually do this independently to a certain extent on their own, right? If you can have them sit at one, one side of the table and you doing your own work in peace and no mama, 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 or something like that, that's kind of like a great ideal to reach. So how do you get to that level? So first of all, your, if you're going to use sensorial means to actually learn, you don't have to do it like one hour. Try with bite size five minutes first, then extend to 10 minutes and then extend to 15 minutes. You will see that if you break it down to that level, it is so, so, so much more productive and efficient in increasing a child's attention span than if you say, yeah, this is a one hour activity. Let's both figure it out and do it. You're going to get frustrated. The child's going to get frustrated because you have no idea how you're actually doing this. So if it comes in a box, like there's an activity like this and you've got the book that comes with it, like for math, let's say using math as an example. Just pick one problem sum, all right? First of all, have a baseline of how your child is actually doing it. How does the child actually approach um, your, your, the, the, the sum in the first place without the clay? How do you feel teaching the child to approach it in that way? Then after that, you know, maybe give them some, a little bit of clay just to explore the medium for the first time if they haven't done it. Don't need to do the sum again. Just leave it as a that. Let them get acquainted to the material. And then the next day or something of that sort, another 10, 15 minutes, you try doing the problem sum together with the clay. Now, you, you don't expect your child to already know how to use the clay because this is completely different. They might liken it to Play-Doh. And Play-Doh is something that you use and then you can again. But this one, they need to realize that when they actually use it, they can create something that is, you know, um, uh, stable and can be there for a very long time, you know, uh, that you don't have to disrupt it. Like this is something that we created for, uh, bar models and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So they need to have a sort of a, um, an interest in creating something that's going to be there for a longer lasting period as opposed to just canning it away. That one, that's one mm -hmm. more thing. And then you can talk to them about how will you sort of express these bananas? How will you make bananas? So it doesn't become about the problem sum anymore. It becomes more of like, oh, I'm exploring. Oh, I'm discovering. Oh, I'm actually making something different. And then that just completely engages your child if you keep practicing and doing it. So don't think that, oh my God, this is going to be a mammoth task to actually 
get a child to do this at the get-go. It's just small, small ones. And believe you me, after a while, the child will ask for the clay themselves. Mm. They will use it as a strategy. They will use it as a medium. They will use it as a support, not just for maybe maths, but for maybe even English comprehension or something of that sort, because they want to add that fun element into learning. And if you can let them get those skills to figure out how to make the learning fun for themselves, you are kind of building really on their life skills. And you can rest assured that they will try and apply it for many different aspects of their life as they grow up. Wonderful. Yeah, and I, to and I to totally agree with you that when it comes to focus, um, we need to engage the child in certain activity that can hold their attention for a long time. Because um, many parents, again, they come to us saying that, John, how do I get my child to be more focused? Yeah, and I think I want, and I want to share with you a story um, which probably you can actually shed more lights on the psychology behind the learning. Yeah, um, my middle child, uh, I would say that math is not really her, her, her favorite subject. Yeah, so in the past, I and I used to uh, tell her, remind her three, at least three times, then she'll go to a table. Yeah, so recently, because of circuit breaker, and my wife actually got her to help her in baking. Yeah. Yeah, and, and she started to help in the mixing, uh, filling the messes as well as like the dough and then using the measuring cup. And then because of that, now when I ask her to do math, she'll do it straight away. Yeah. So actually what, so based on your expertise and experience, actually what is happening in the psychology level of the child when it comes to the activity base as well as relating back to okay. how you have brought up Jordan since young. Okay, uh, this is uh, such a beautiful story. Uh, something beautiful has obviously happened, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing about children's thinking, okay? They are very concrete, especially at that, that um, stage, okay? For example, uh, an example of concreteness would be like, um, I don't know how to draw a car. Mm -hmm. you, they might have it in their mind, but they don't know how to move their hands to actually draw a car, right? That's why the children would say, Oh, can you help me? I don't know how to do it. And that's that I cannot do it. I don't know how to do it. It's actually a trained response because then the parents kind of jump in and help them. Okay, so ah. that one we leave as a premise. Okay, now when something like that happens and they look at a math book, all right, mm -hmm. and they look at words and problem sums and all of these things that look so foreign to them mm -hmm. and they are associating with it as work, they're completely switched off. That engagement level at the get-go, it's like a, you're fighting a, a losing battle. But if you translate these topics or these words into something like an activity, like what you have, what your wife has um, really wonderfully done with baking, and then use that as an opportunity to explain to them what's going on or draw in some reference um, to, to something that they might have learned in masses or weight or mixing or, or volume or proportions or something of that sort, it suddenly becomes an aha moment to them because children are sensorial beings. They are very, very uh, uh, highly engaged by their senses because that's how the brain explores the environment when they are born. They start with exploring with their mouth because that's the food source. And also, you know, that's why they try and lick everything because they want to know how the texture is because their hands are not working that well yet, right? So, so if you give them a sensorial way to sort of engage with anything that is a little more abstract in terms of words, you've already found a winning formula to get them engaged. So with baking is excellent because the textures, that ex the different types of textures give another dimension to the sensorial element. Mm -hmm. And then you have essentially helped them find the connecting dots between abstract mathematics and uh, fun, engaging activity so that they can then fall back in their mind to that activity when they're thinking about mathematics, which is why you don't have that much of resistance after that. So if you sat there and bought, brought some measuring cups to actually show how volume works or something mm -hmm. of that sort, your child mm -hmm. will be more open-minded to try and learn it uh, as opposed to if you're just going with the book and just reading word of word because they don't understand. Mm. They don't make the connections at that point. So that's what's kind of happening. And I like the parts that you break down mathematics into two parts because you said uh, abstract mathematics as well as fun-based mathematics. Yeah, and I, and I, and I think that uh, this is very important because 
many parents go to a teacher and say that my child is not interested in math or doesn't like mm. math. Yeah, so it sounds like now I can ask a question. Is your child not interested in the abstract parts or the fun parts? Because I think that many parents may not know what is fun because, um, or what is fun based mathematics? Because to us, when we were uh, taught at a, at a very young age, it's probably just books and tests and, yes. and exams. Yeah, so um, in the business of parents, um, let's say they have yet to get like um, like your clay kits and other form of uh, tools. What are some of the things that they can use at home to yeah. start to make math more engaging for their kids? Probably can start yeah. off with P1 because I think, because Jonah is in P1. Sure. Yeah. Um, I think there are many ways in, uh, in the house to actually make this exciting for children. And it mm -hmm. doesn't have to be over the top, over the moon. Yeah, let me clear off mm. my schedule for four hours and then let's do this. No, it doesn't have to be that way. Um, so to answer your question, is it usually the academic uh, abstract mathematics that's the problem or the fun? It's obviously the abstract uh, mathematics because they haven't cracked the abstractness yet. They don't mm. know how to make it fun yet because anything in life can be made fun. Right, so if you're if you're actually sort of not having any materials at home, use like the rulers, use like wooden blocks, use toys. Um, you can make uh, just paper, pencil, and and color pencils and so on, scissors to cut out shapes and so on, so that they kind of understand if the question is about triangles or rectangles and so on, they can physically cut it out. So that is an activity on its own, which is serving uh, a purpose to reach a means to the end, which is to actually solve the problem. Mm -hmm. Once you cut it out and make it concrete and it's right in front of your eyes, you can manipulate the information in front of you. Uh, you can manipulate the, uh, the, 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 the parts of it mm -hmm. so that it's not just in a 2D form in a book, mm -hmm. but it's something here that you can your, use your fingers to make sense of. Right. Mm -hmm. So very, very simple things like, you know, water, if you allow them, you know, let them have some fun, maybe put like a canvas sheet or something on the floor and just give them some water to sort of, um, you know, move it around in different containers and so on. If it's in line with the mathematical sum, that mm. sort of thing. It doesn't have to be exactly what the problem sum says. Mm -hmm. You are mm -hmm. just trying to crack their focus and attention and engagement by getting them interested so mm -hmm. that their brain mm -hmm. is in a certain space for you to actually teach them what you need to teach them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And as, as you're sharing, I can hear the objections of our parents because okay, because I think uh, we have run many parents workshops in the past and yes I and I totally agree with you like almost everything you have said about engaging the kids using normal th things at home yeah at the same time I think uh, probably in my experience eight out of ten parents are going to tell us that they have no time so what's your view on that okay so <laughs> I, I have quite um, I have quite a um, I have no time I have no time, right? I run a business, I, I lecture, I, 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 I have uh, many things to take care of, right? And you study as well, right? You, I, uh, study, I study, I study, I'm always constantly doing something, right? And I want to exercise, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do many things, right? But I think this is where I have to tell the parents, if you really care enough, mm -hmm. <laughs> you will make 15 minutes for your child. You have to, mm -hmm. you have to because you have a person who is alive, and is a human being over there waiting for your guidance on how uh -huh. he or she is going to approach life later on. Okay, uh -huh. sure, uh -huh. there are two types of parents. I give you the assessment book, you do it on your own, all right? And then the other one who's completely involved. So I'm not addressing those who are completely involved at this one. I'm talking to those who want to do the assessment books and, and you know, kind of say you don't have time. Uh -huh. It's uh -huh. fine if you want to be that way. But, uh -huh. you know, think from a perspective of how you're going to actually sort of use that 15 minutes or something just to create that, bonding and relationship with your child so that when they are a teenager or something of that sort they will still fall back to you mm -hmm, all right mm -hmm. you have that relationship as a baseline and you don't have to do over the moon on, on top of the world sort of thing because um you as a responsible parent has brought this person into being right mm -hmm. and i guess there is a there is a uh, there's a duty there to sort of guide this child to how he or she can be better equipped to do things in 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 when they actually reach adulthood and so on and you know what if your child doesn't know how to do the academics it doesn't mean that it's it's, it's the child is you know um, stupid or you know something of that sort there is always a way to find an access 
to this way of um, getting into the child's world, I would say. And yes, it requires effort, but kind of, you know, that's what you signed up for being a parent, quite honestly, right? Um, <laughs> it's, it, I mean, mm. that's what I tell parents. So, so mm. I, I would say everything that I'm talking about is to the parent who is self-selecting him or herself to want to go on this journey to actually um, give effective tools and resources to, to their child. Mm. And if you don't want to do that, and if you want something that's ready made and so on, yes, we have a version for that where it's videos and so on, so that the child can sit there and mm -hmm. try and understand what's happening. That's also possible. But mm. if if your way of thinking about this is studying is just studying, then maybe you need to kind of look into um, reading up some articles, reading up some resources to see how it is that um, your mind or your your mindset about learning and teaching now is very mm. um maybe different from what you went through because mm -hmm. you have to remember that the world today is very different from when we went through road learning mm -hmm. because of everything that's happening now with the digital era mm -hmm. the jobs that we have today are not going to be the same jobs that you would have for your children 20 years ago which means they run a very high risk of actually becoming obsolete in their doing and mm. the only things that would help them is if they've got the thinking, problem-solving skills to make themselves effective. And there's no easy way to do this besides, mm. you know, having some level of involvement. 15 minutes, not every day, maybe once a week, or like you take them out one, one hour, just talk to them. You don't even have to do anything. Just talk to them so that when they have an issue, they know that they can actually come to you as opposed to anyone else for guidance. Um, and along the way, things will happen in, in, in learning because learning is not all about just the books and, and the exams. Like what I have experienced and what my, my husband has experienced. At the end of that, when we came out, when we graduated, when we went to the working world, we felt like, oh my God, this is not what I signed up for life. Mm. And that's the worst feeling to have if you've done so good for your exams and so on. And you thought that, you know, you based it, you've got it, whatever. And then you come out and say, oh my God, I don't know how to like do my bills. I don't know how to like manage my finances. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> so so yeah that's my two cents worth to the parents i advocate i encourage i i really i know life is tough i know that you're putting in so much of hard work to mm -hmm. work so hard but if you cannot do that 15 minutes one hour over the weekend or 15 minutes per day with your child then i honestly would like to request for you to kind of look at reframing mm -hmm how maybe what needs to kind of be put where in your organization. That's what mm. I would say. It's great sharing, yeah. Um, allow me to chip in as well. Um, probably for parents, uh, if let's say every day, you only have one minute to, to, to spend with your kid. And, and I mean, if you, if you do not even have one minute to spend with your kid, uh, then I think uh, it's something that you have to ask yourself, are you spending any time with your kid at all? But for parents who are considering, say, let's say you have one minute to spend your kid, um, and you'll become a choice of like, you'll become a question of like, what method will you use to teach your kid? It can be just marking her homework or talking to her or, or engaging her, her in sen sensorial activity, which is like probably using clay or plastic chips or magnetic strips to get her to use her other senses. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say here is probably from having no time at all, it will become a question is what method can I use? Yeah. So you can also ask yourself like, um, what method can I use to teach my kid instead of just marking her homework, which is pretty boring. And I think it's a very stress, stressful time between the parent and child. Because um, like, let me share with you a story like, um, Sometimes I encourage parents to, to take a break with their kid and make something nice for them to eat. But in the midst of the child eating the bread or the snack prepared by the mom, the mom is actually is marking her work next to her. And as the mom is marking, she's like frowning and say, I am creating all those sound like of like displeasure. So it, it's very hard for the child to enjoy that kind of break. Yeah. Yeah, and that's another thing that I want to check in with you is because uh, one of the assumptions that I see in today's world is, uh, is the preference for instant gratification. Yes. Yeah. Um, because I know that being a parent, being a parent myself, I am in like at least three WhatsApp groups and Facebook groups, and I think the normal, the common behavior of parents is when my child is stuck in say a problem sum, 
So what they'll do is they'll take a picture and then they'll post it in the WhatsApp group and get the answer instantly. And maybe not just one group, maybe they cluster it in all groups and hoping that uh, this one will come, I mean, which one will come in the fastest. Yeah. So what's your view on this? Like, because you mentioned some of the learned habits of children uh, being who pass the questions to the, to the parents and then getting them the answer, getting them to answer on behalf of the kid. So what's your view on um, it? So, I mean, okay. So this is a unique problem that yeah. when we didn't have technology and so on, we didn't have to face. Like if we, when we didn't have technology, we would say, okay, yeah, you don't know how to do that. Or oh, mommy also doesn't know how to do that. Okay, mm -hmm. maybe let's wait until we go to the teacher and find out the next day. Sure. Now you cannot wait. Right now, everyone wants the answer immediately. And I guess, you know, that it's more like, it's not right or wrong the way that mm -hmm. you do it, but more like, what do you want to teach your child by doing it that way? Okay. Clearly, surely you can possibly on your own in the back of it without your child knowing or anything, you could go and ask these if you don't know how to do it, like in the WhatsApp group and so on. But how do you manage yourself doing that, right? Sometimes you can say, yeah, I'm putting it on the WhatsApp group. Uh, I might get an answer now, I might not, but let's just wait and see how we get it. Um, if you don't know how to do this sum right now, let's just move on and, and move forward. And then of course the child will be like, yeah, but I want to get it done now, 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 you know. But this mm -hmm. is an opportunity for you to teach them that not all good things in life come immediately. You kind of have to wait. And it's a very good thing to teach a child when they're early on because I see it in Dronen as well. I see it in myself as well because me before all of this technology was very different compared to me right now. If an email comes, I want to immediately get a response to it or, you know, and so on and so forth. And you can't run away from it. But mm -hmm. it's really about managing it within good reason. It's not wrong to want to get the response immediately. I would look at it, look, I would look at it as, you know, resourcefulness to get what you want. By mm -hmm. just sending it to one place, maybe you have to wait for the answer. But if you send it to multiple channels, perhaps you might get an answer faster. That's mm -hmm. okay. But mm -hmm. the thinking around it, not because I want it now, 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 and I'm just like really getting frustrated as I don't get it, but more like, okay, let's just wait and see how we do it. You know, think from a perspective of many other people might have to process this. Many other people might have other things to do. So I've mm -hmm. done all the actions to kind of get my answer, but now we just have to wait and we just have mm -hmm. to tell, you know, like, well, you just have to wait until you get your answer. You know, that's what I would tell my child. And he's learned to do that, especially with SLS and so on and so forth, home-based learning. Everything is almost immediate. Um, and there were lots of questions. So we had a lot of back and forth with the teachers. So we just send them an email, but the teachers were so lovely. Uh, mm. They actually responded to the emails quite promptly or gave me a call and stuff like that. So I've got to hand it to them for that. Mm. Yeah. So sounds like it's not the way that we get the questions answered but it's more like what we teach the child while while doing it because it can go yeah. both ways one is i can teach my child that uh people are busy and now mommy is trying her best to get some help still you must learn how to solve it versus yeah i want people to to solve it now and i don't and i don't care yeah, yeah and, no. and 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 mommy's going to do what ever for you and and probably sometimes i think i also believe that sometimes the children can can uh, feel the feeling of the parents. Even the parents didn't say it out. Yeah, just by observing. Yeah, so yes. if the parents is uh, very rushy and just want it done fast at the expense of other people's time, probably somehow parents please, uh, please take notes. The and your child may pick something out of it, and probably this will be part of his behavior. Uh, eventually, too. Yeah, and you know what? If you if you need to learn a lesson, get it wrong. It's fine. I mean, just get it wrong. It doesn't have to be right all the time. And then maybe there's a learning opportunity over there as well. It's great sharing. Yeah. So now we have come to the end of the sharing. Um, you have shared many wonderful tips. So what is one tip that parents can actually use it right now, starting today, to um, better engage their children? I think um, if you really want to engage your child, uh, you really got to whip up some sort of an activity, make it fun because learning mm -hmm. is supposed to be fun at the heart of anything. If something is fun, you would want to do it. If something is not fun, you don't want to do it. So create it to be fun. Like, you know, maybe use some paints or use some drawing or mm -hmm. you don't have to go out to the store and get something. You can just, you know, see what you have in the house and, and sort of put it together, some cardboard, give it to them and just say, you know what, today, I know you have homework, but maybe let's for a moment, you know, create something different. 
And I'll give you all of these. And then I expect to see maybe like in, in half an hour that you've created something. And children love challenges. They love to be um, uh, sort of um, taken out of their comfort zone a little bit. So if you mm-hmm. can hone that or try that, I think that'd be great. Yeah, just my two cents worth. Sure. Okay. And now uh, we'll come to a question that I will always ask my guest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course, now, now, and I know that you know a lot of uh, tools and techniques and even tricks when it comes to learning using the five senses. Yeah, so, um, and I know that right now, with three months away from primary six, uh, kids doing their PSOE and probably parents and children are getting stressed out. Yeah, yeah. can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so if, let's say, we bring you down the memory lane and you meet... Um, the 12 year old teacher Amu, then, yeah, so you can see yourself and then you can see your face and probably the surroundings and feel it as well. So, what will you tell yourself then? <sighs> <laughs> yeah, it will be interesting to talk to ourselves sometimes. And, yeah, PSLE yeah. was a very stressful period. Okay. Um, what would I tell myself? Yes, probably when it comes to looking back in terms of the beautiful life that you have created. And then yes, when you go back to your child years old, she doesn't know what is going to happen in the yeah, next Yeah, absolutely. Uh, many years, I, yeah. Yes. I, I would have told myself to relax and have some more time to play a little bit more, quite mm. honestly. Because mm. if you look at the literature on brain right now, you cannot do your chionging of uh, mug, or chionging or mugging of work uh, at one go because that's not learning. That's not how learning retention happens. You need to have that break. You need to have that rest. And I don't think I took as much. And I think, I think if I had you know um, rested a little bit more or did something more fun and not been serious all all the time, I could have become more productive. There's mm. real truth and bring research to say this right that you need a change in activity so that you can re-engage back. Uh, so that's probably what I would have told myself. Like, you know, take a chill pill, go and eat an ice cream, go watch some TV or something. Maybe after half an hour of work, maybe watch 10 minutes of TV or go do something, like go and move a little bit and then come back and do the next topic. Yeah. Uh, great, great. Yeah. And for parents who are still with us right now, um, probably my, my interpretation is it is not don't study and play only. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> not at <It's>, all, please. <laughs> You still must study for your PSLE, yeah, in order to do well in your own way. At the same time, I think what I got it out from Chir Amu is uh, do not just study like how everyone is studying, which is doing worksheets, buying top school papers, uh, and marking and scolding at appropriate times. <laughs> yeah, I think it is um, more than just writing. And what I got it from you is discovering more creative ways to learn. Yeah. And probably that can be more effective for your child. And probably it will just solve most of the problems when it comes to uh, not focusing in math or not being able to score well or not being able to retain what you've learned. Yeah, probably what your Amu has shared in the past one hour could be part of the solutions that you're looking for. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. It's been a very nice sharing and I learned a lot from you. Yeah. For because I think that whatever you have shared is all backed up by science and research. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, that's that's at the bedrock of it. Yeah. Yes, um, yes. So so thank you very much for this opportunity, John. Um, I think that there's a lot more. I mean, it's a, it's an ongoing journey. I mean, there's no end point. We wish there's end point, but um, sometimes you just got to keep going in terms of you know acquiring knowledge, exercising it, and so on and so forth. So I hope this has been valuable. Uh, for the parents who have shared with us and thank you very much for this opportunity yes and if parents wants to find you uh where can they find you um so uh well uh, i'm quite visible i think uh you can find me on our click it page that's k-l-a-y-k-i-t all right or da vinci group page that's d-a-v for vienna i-n-c-i-g-r-o-u-p and then obviously there's a Facebook page, a Facebook group for Clay Kit uh, Digital uh, Learning Enthusiasts. Um, mm-hmm. If you wanted to find out a bit more information, you can go to our website. That's www. 
claykit.com, K-L-A-Y-K-I-T.com. If you wanted to know um, just from uh, others in terms of testimonials and so on, there's stuff over there. We're also going to be featured in uh, Channel News, um, Channel 8 News tomorrow morning. I think it's called Morning Express Wow. Uh, for ClayKit. So okay, if you wanted good. to... It sort of get an understanding of uh, what it is. You can go check it out over there. I don't really know how it's going to be done <laughs> because I don't know whether the subtitles or whatever. So I'm going in blind myself. Uh, but mm. they did some recording and stuff. So, so I'm looking nice. forward to seeing that. So these are some ways you can get in touch with me uh, and so on and so forth. Great. And all the best for your interview tomorrow. It, it's going to be fun. It's, it's already fun. done. I think like they've, they've done some filming because they can't do an interview during Circuit Breaker, right? So they took out oh. products and then they did something. So it's just airing tomorrow. So, awesome, so let's awesome. see what that looks like. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. If if possible, uh, take, take some screen, screenshot or video. Okay. Um, well, you can't use most of it, <laughs> but you can no. probably... I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know whether they give subtitles or not, but I guess, you know, it's, it's always good to... I'm quite curious to see how they did it. So anyways. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay. Thanks so much for your time as well and have a good day. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Bye. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.